Food manufacturing can be split into two different stages. Primary processing where raw food products are cleaned, sorted, transported, and blended. And secondary processing where ingredients are combined to form new food products by sorting, removing defects, mixing, cooking, baking, or chilling. In primary processing, robots and machines typically complete butchering tasks and the washing and sorting of fruits and vegetables. Robots are much easier to add into secondary processing because that is where the size of food and food ingredients is more standardized, although you will see some exceptions to this later in the video. Robots are now moving more into primary food production into areas such as meat, dairy, and cereal processing. Typically, people don't want to work in harsh environments like refrigerated warehouses or in cramped spaces completing repetitive tasks on a processing line. By contrast, robots excel at this type of work and can do it reliably. Advances in AI, computer vision, and complex machines will make the automation of more primary food processing tasks possible in this decade. But for now, we will talk mostly about secondary food processing and restaurants. Today, the restaurant and food service industry is under considerable pressure. COVID safety protocols in the US and Canada have resulted in dining spaces being underutilized and in many cases closed. Customers have become hyper aware of food and dining safety and their habits have changed drastically. We've seen an uptick in fast food consumption. While people are still demanding healthier options, adoption of third party delivery apps, demand for higher quality ingredients and greater transparency about food safety and cleanliness procedures. And on top of all that, restaurateurs were already experiencing rising costs of rent and real estate, increasing food and labor costs, labor shortages driven by demographic shifts, all while being in one of the most competitive industries in existence. In response to these pressures, we see a number of trends in the hospitality industry, including minimizing restaurant footprint to save on real estate costs, ghost kitchens, which make food for multiple brands in the same kitchen while eliminating dining space, managing the health risks of human contact with food and reducing labor involved in food preparation. Automation can help businesses achieve all of the above. Let's take a deep dive into how some restaurants are leveraging food prep automation to be competitive. We're revisiting Creator Burger Bar, which if you recall was my number one restaurant automation pick. I really like this solution because it reduces labor costs. It drastically reduces the restaurant footprint as well. I mean, just the integrated pickle slicer alone means you don't need to have a whole bunch of counter space, cutting boards, and prep cooks, as well as the space for those people to move around. The ingredients are also individually separated in the machine, which is great because there's no cross-contamination. The machine itself is mesmerizing and entertaining. I really appreciate the attention to detail and attention to aesthetics that they put into this machine. It's not just another big hunk of industrial stainless steel. It's actually quite pleasant to look at, and it really adds to the experience when you can watch your burger get made in this beautiful machine. The ingredients are freshly sliced to order rather than batch prepped. The bun slicer and toaster are integrated and the food is likely very consistent in quality, much more consistent than a human crew could produce because of all of the temperature sensors and other sensors that are integrated into this machine. A machine like this that assembles the burger step by step lends itself very well to order customization and it's also less likely to make mistakes on those customized orders because all of that data, all of the customizations that the customer wants are already in the database and integrated with the machine. Another big advantage of the Creator Burger machine is that you don't need to teach people how to cook, which greatly simplifies your onboarding processes in your business. And it also limits human contact with food because everything is totally enclosed. Things I don't like about this solution. The produce have to be of uniform size. They have to be washed and peeled and pre-processed before being put in the machine. And I can guarantee you it is a person in the kitchen that is doing that. Deciding what parts of a produce are desirable and undesirable and then cutting out the undesirable parts is quite a difficult task to automate. Uh, it's a very difficult vision problem, although it's not entirely 
impossible with today's technology. And then there's also a mechanical engineering challenge because peeling and manipulating objects that are non-rigid, such as cloth or onion skin, can also be quite tricky for robots to manage. So unfortunately, there are not a lot of great solutions today for tackling this. I really hope that they've got the reliability of this machine proved out. I really like the fact that they have so many integrated pieces in, in this machine, integrated processes in this machine, which saves a lot of space. But unfortunately, if the machine goes down, that also means that you lose a lot of processes at once and you can't make any burgers. One of the main reasons that you automate something is to reduce the labor cost. And Picnic Pizza definitely delivers on that. Of course, there's many other benefits of automating the task of assembling pizzas. So let's unpack that now. This solution is modular, versatile, and it's easily expanded, which I love. Uh, it assembles the food or the pizza and it combines all the ingredients. It's faster and more efficient than human production. According to the CEO, it does 312 inch pizzas in an hour. The additional modules can be made to slice the ingredients fresh. Another reason that you would want to automate something is to introduce consistency to the process. The distribution of toppings on each pizza is very uniform and I would imagine that the pizza quality that comes out of this machine, that the pizzas that are assembled out of this machine are very consistent in terms of quality. It's sanitary and eliminates a significant amount of human contact and it's ripe for integration with digital ordering which is a huge trend right now. Some things I don't like about this solution, it doesn't handle the washing and cutting and preparation of the vegetables. Uh, it doesn't integrate with anything for cooking, like a pizza oven, for example, and it doesn't toss or create the dough. I don't feel that these are really food companies, rather they're technology companies that just happen to make food. I would guess that the business model has more to do with selling and licensing and supporting the technology and the technology platforms. And they're just using the restaurants as a way to prove out the tech and get tons of press. Zoom Pizza. What I really like about this solution is the efficiencies that they were able to find. Having the pizzas cook while they're on the way to the delivery location is such a, such a brilliant efficiency. I wonder if it, what it costs to outfit a truck full of these uh, pizza ovens. Uh, I think it's a brilliant te technology nonetheless, but I wonder if anybody's done the economic analysis to see uh, if it would be smarter to have a Cartesian robot, you know, pull these pizzas from uh, some storage shelf inside of the truck and then fire in only one or two ovens rather than having 10 or 12 ovens in the truck. Unlike Picnic Pizza, they've automated the pizza cutting, which is another great efficiency to find. The custom cutter and pneumatic system does a faster and more perfect job of slicing up that pizza and it should be also appreciated that the engineer took the time to make sure that you have to have the guard down before you actuate uh, the pneumatic cutting action. How very German of them. You can see very clearly that the prep work is still being done by hand. The varying size, colors and shapes of produce make them exceptionally difficult to process automatically. Determining defects as I mentioned before, is also difficult um, and it's more easily accomplished by a person. I definitely think that the technology exists today to do this, but it would take a significant amount of time and monetary investment in order to get a working solution. You'd have to integrate vision systems, 3D scanners, a clever automated slicing machine. You'd also need lots of photo and data in order to create some kind of uh, deep learning neural net to identify defects in vegetables and their shapes. It all seems like too much effort really uh, an investment at the moment compared to just hiring a prep cook. I'm definitely not a professional pizza chef although I do feel that the pressing machine that smushifies the ball of dough into the pizza shape is maybe pizza sacrilege or perhaps at best an engineering shortcut. I'm not sure that a food critic could taste the difference between a hand tossed pizza and, the, and one that was uh, smushed like this. It probably wouldn't be too difficult though to make a dough tossing machine that uh, tossed the dough in a very similar way to a person and would definitely save some pizza chef's shoulders in the future. What are some of the things I don't like about this solution? Well, 
I think that not automating the application of toppings is a missed opportunity here. Picnic Pizza managed to do it, uh, and for whatever reason, Zoom hasn't. I'm not sure that why Zoom uh, chose not to do this, but perhaps it's because they want to have a more artisanal take on their pizza and their brand. The counter argument, of course, is that the Picnic style pizza would be much more consistent than the Zoom product. The solution is not all compact either because they're using primarily industrial technology to automate everything and they're kind of shoehorning it into an existing kitchen. I would like to see a little bit more engineering involved so that uh, they could make the solution more compact and therefore save on some real estate space. After seeing the sauce spreading module from Picnic, I would say that the Picnic one is a much smarter design as it uses computer vision and a cheap Cartesian robot to spread the sauce evenly over the pizza. Uh, the Zoom solution I think is super overkill. Uh, using a Delta robot to spread pizza sauce, uh, the Delta robot is just capable of, of way more. It's like paying Usain Bolt to race a bunch of toddlers. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. One easy thing to miss here is the sick brand light curtain that probably shuts down everything if you stick your hand anywhere close to the sauce spreading Delta robot. Cafe X definitely has some cool factor and it's mesmerizing to watch as well. But I think 50 years from now, the novelty of watching a robot make your coffee will probably wear off a little bit. It's sanitary and fully enclosed from the outside air. The coffees made by the Cafe X robot will be more consistent than if a human crew made them. This is because the robot will be measuring the ingredients exactly to the recipe. If you ask for customizations like half sweet or I don't want whipped cream on top, the robot and the system is much less likely to miss those types of customizations. I love the idea of doing a flight of espressos. Having robots, baristas prepare the food and the drinks means that your service staff can focus more on top-notch service and improving the experience. This also opens up opportunities for upselling and educational selling, which I think will be very beneficial to this specific business model. Things I don't like about this solution, there's no self-cleaning as far as I can tell, and the owner has even said they need to have somebody come by and clean everything once a day and, and refill all of the supplies. I've never been a huge fan of touchscreen menu ordering as well. It's not terribly sanitary and it seems like a downgrade in service. I think to have Higher margin restaurants, restaurateurs should be automating the processes that make sense to automate, but also investing in greater staff training to focus on elevating the service and the customer experience. There are many improvements that could be made to store tons of ingredients in a really small space here, uh, which would increase the drink selection, but I'm sure that Cafe X is already thinking about this. All right, revisiting Spice from the restaurant automation video. It automates the cooking, it self cleans the tumbling walk, which is awesome. Packaging isn't automated and neither is the movement of the product, but it's not necessarily a negative because having a person deliver the dish to you as that final step is a, is a nice service and human touch. Food cutting is never shown, but I, I have to assume that like all of the applications before this, it's not automated. It's done by some prep cooks in the back. I do like how Spice is advertising or saying that having humans do the garnishing is that last little human touch. It's an artisanal touch to the food and that we're not just automating everything. I, I love the fact that they're doing that for the brand. Personally, I feel that garnishing though, as well as things like latte art for Cafe X are things that could be automated actually with the right robotic design. Flippy is a cooking automation solution that can make fries or flip burgers. It uses AI image recognition to identify the objects around it, and it cleans the grill as well as stray batter out of the frying oil, which I'm sure saves a lot of time. It will increase the consistency of the food produced in the kitchen because it's always going to take out those fries on time. The design of Flippy follows our philosophy, the targeted automation philosophy, which is uh, finding one high value, high return task and automating that while ignoring everything else and then moving on to the next thing without trying to automate every single process in the kitchen, for example. The kitchen environment doesn't need to be changed for this solution, which is awesome because there's so many other solutions that have conveyor systems that take up a lot of space. 
Flippy can be integrated into an already existing kitchen, which gives it an advantage when it comes to adoption. As usual, the raw food preparation is not done by the robotic solution. But let's be honest, those tater tots are probably not made in-house anyways. You may be wondering why the robot looks like a ghost, and uh, that's because when you see robots being used for paint or medical use or welding, typically they have some kind of uh, protective sleeve on it to protect the robot against particulates and aerosols that can reduce the service life of the robot, and having it close to frying oil is probably no different. The robot needs to be protected from that. The Moly Robotics Arm Solution. It can be integrated right into your kitchen. You can use a variety of tools to cook whatever you want and clean up after itself. So in that way, it's very versatile. The downside, unfortunately, is that they're very expensive. Right now, they're touting a price of 248,000 pounds. There's a high variety of foods that can be prepared, of course. It cleans up after itself with a built-in dishwasher and refrigeration unit. And there's uh, excessive hygienic features with UV lights being used to sanitize some aspects of the containers in, during the food preparation. It also uses vacuum containers to keep the food fresh, which is a welcome innovation. It covers most kitchen activities except for ingredient washing and processing. Some of the things I don't like about this solution, well, it requires the owner to meticulously organize and prepare the ingredients. It almost feels like the human is the slave to the robot in this case, which I find a little bit comical. It moves quite slow and it would have difficulty doing something like a stir fry on high heat. But I can definitely see how software over time can overcome these sort of speed limitations. Um, it also may be moving slow in the video just because the guard is down. I don't actually know. All utensils have to be put back perfectly. Uh, it would be nice if the robot could do that for you. but it looks like to me that it really relies on the fact that uh, everything is where it's supposed to be. But I could be wrong. The funniest part of this video is how the presenter has to cut the onion because the robot can't do it itself. I'm sure this will be resolved in, in the future when there's software improvements, um, but it's just not there yet. Likely the motions are being taught to the robot by a motion capture. I haven't heard the visionary behind the company speak, but I would imagine the business strategy is something similar to Tesla. Overbuild the hardware initially and then upgrade the software so that the functionality is expanded later on. And start with a very expensive toy for affluent customers and then iterate on the technology until we all have a robotic kitchen in our home that's no more costly than owning a dishwasher. And of course, when it comes to prepping the ingredients, I would imagine that they are working very slowly on teaching some AI on how to cut an onion. The robotic restaurant in Guangzhou. As usual, China has found a way to make all of this industrial style machinery unnecessarily cute and fun. It's as almost as if to say, look at the pretty lights and cute anime faces while we steal all of your ideas. In all seriousness, I'm not sure if Cafe X or Spice came before this restaurant, but you can definitely tell that some of the solutions are stunningly similar. Look at the induction heated tumbler wok. The only difference between this and the spice solution is the rim on the outside and the fact that it has two baffles instead of one. It even plops the ingredients into the wok in the same way. In this solution, meal assembly, ingredient cooking, garnishing, combining of food ingredients, food service, quality control, all being done by robots and machines. Most of the tasks in the restaurant are automated. However, you do not see ingredient cutting and preparation, and you also don't see much cleaning or wash up of the kitchen or the robotic implements and end effectors. And I do have to give it a negative uh, point for too much automation on the service side of this sit down restaurant. I do have a bone to pick with these little lettuce containers that are clearly 3D printed. I hope that these are not used to prepare the food for actual customers and just for a demonstration video. While they could be printed out of food safe materials such as HDPE, the surface finish of 3D printed parts is not smooth enough to pass North American food machine standards such as ANSI NSF2. There's a wide variety of food preparation tasks that happen in the kitchen, whether it be personal or commercial. You've got washing and peeling, identifying good and waste parts of ingredients, cutting, combining, cooking, garnishing, packing, cleaning up, and quality control. 
As you can see from the many examples in this video, peeling, cutting, garnishing, and quality control are tasks least chosen to be automated by engineers. In particular, the problem of identifying which parts of raw ingredients are desirable and which parts are waste is difficult, even with AI and computer vision. In addition, manipulating non-rigid ingredients represents an additional mechanical design challenge. Although the preparation of raw vegetables and meat remains one of the most grueling and labor-intensive kitchen tasks, I think we're stuck doing it ourselves, at least for a few more years. Tackling this problem will take extensive data collection, many software, electrical, and mechanical engineering hours to come up with a working solution. So what will the next few years in the food industry look like? I believe food delivery trends will continue in North America in a similar way that Amazon has taken away business from brick and mortar retailers. Automation is expensive, so most smaller privately owned restaurants will have difficulty competing on the cost of preparing food. In the 10 to 20 year time scale, small restaurants may only thrive because of their unique flavor or their sit down experience. Larger players in the food industry will most certainly deploy additional automation to decrease kitchen sizes, reduce labor costs, and make food preparation more hygienic, especially as automation becomes cheaper and more accessible for smaller facilities. It will make it easier for them to dominate fast casual takeout and the delivery market. With all this technology making its way into food preparation, you can expect even more meal personalization without sacrificing convenience or response time. Kitchen technology platforms such as Picnic, Spice, Itza will de-risk kitchen automation for larger food and restaurant brands and make it more cost effective for them to adopt. Ultimately, the food industry will move towards making tasty meals frictionless, convenient, personalized, and cost effective for the masses. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see even more automated restaurants, we have a video listing our top 10 restaurant automation applications. Check that out in the description below.